Today I'm going to be running you through the Logitech G Pro X TKL Lightspeed keyboard software. This is going to be using the Logitech G Hub Pro software. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So when you install the G Hub software from Logitech, this is going to be the screen you're greeted with when the keyboard gets plugged in. Here you can see your battery life. Here you can see roughly the time remaining about 29 hours. And then you can see the connection type and I'm using Lightspeed. And then at the bottom right over here, you can see that we do have onboard memory. Currently we have that set to off. So what this is, is you can save your settings onto the keyboard rather than to your computer and this is going to be really helpful if you're someone who travels between different locations and you want your settings saved to the keyboard if i go ahead and click that and then just go to the settings you can see that we do have our onboard memory slots over here and you can go ahead and just assign the profile and then in the settings menu you can just see kind of a quick rundown on things like your polling rate your lighting your max charge as well as the firmware versions that the keyboard is using. If you want to turn off the onboard memory, all you do is you hit off right here. And now if we go back to the main menu and click on the keyboard, you can see that we do have our light sync tab selected and this is going to be your light settings. So here we have some presets and you can go ahead and do a fixed color. So currently you can see that my keyboard is running on the blue light settings at the moment. If you want to change that to another color, you just click the color and let's say you want it to run on the green and now you can see on the keyboard I'm running on green keys now if you want something a little more fun you can go ahead and choose between different colors and everything like that so let's say I do echo press basically when I press a key it's gonna go ahead and echo so see how the J kind of turned into a different color and I can go ahead and just make a line and you can see that it's all red and then these keys turn blue and they go back to red and you can customize the colors over here for that and there's going to be a bunch of other presets that you can select from i personally like keeping mine on static but you're more than welcome to use them as you wish and i do like using the default blue color now if you want to make your own different custom settings you can go ahead and do that here so the way this works is you select a key so let's say i want the letter a to be the color red i just go ahead and click this and then click red and now you can see it's red on the screen here and it's also red in real life on the actual keyboard as well. So something you can do is make your WASD red and you can see it's easier to identify which keys are there. And this is gonna be really useful in games where you're walking around. If you wanna add some animations to all of this, you can go ahead and click here. And then you can go ahead and start customizing the lighting, the ocean waves, et cetera, et cetera. And this is gonna be similar how you change the lights. I'm gonna just keep mine on all blue here, but we can go ahead and move on to the next tab over here, which is assignment. So this is all of the custom shortcuts that you can customize on your keyboard. So this commands tab is basically just some presets for you to use for things like editing or window sh shortcuts and then navigation keys as well. If you wanna assign a specific key to any of these S keys, you just go ahead and just drag it onto there and then it'll assign it to that. So you can see my F1 and now functions as the letter N instead of F1. And to test that, if I click on this input box and click F1, it types in the letter N. Now, if you wanna revert it back, all you do is you click on it and then you click use default. If we click on actions, this is gonna be the apps that are specific to your computer and you can assign shortcuts from there. So if you use OPS for streaming, you can do things like toggle recording, toggle streaming, and you can assign that to a key. And same with Discord, you have things like mute self and deafen self. Now the macros tab is where a lot of customization can be made. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll just go ahead and call this spam click. And then we assign a style of macro. Is this just a one-time click? Is it a repeat the macro while holding? Or is it a toggle where it's an on and off switch where when it's on, it just keeps spamming it. And when it's off, it's not gonna spam the button. We'll go ahead and do while holding. And then once you're here, the way you create a macro is you click start now and then what you can do is record a keystroke. So now it's in recording mode. So all I need to do is do something on my keyboard or mouse. So I'm just gonna click and I did click down, click up. And when you're done, you just click stop. And then what I can do is I can click save and I can drag the spam click to this F1 key. And like that, you can see now F1 is spam click. So I'm on this click counter and I'm clicking with my mouse right now and it's really, really slow for me to click and my finger is gonna get exhausted. But if I go ahead and hold this F1 key, you can see this thing is clicking and clicking and all I'm doing is holding the key down. If I let go, 
it stopped and then I can just go ahead and do it again. So this is gonna be ultra useful if you need to spam click something without exhausting your finger. That's just a simple macro, but you can go ahead and make them as complicated or as simple as you'd like. And then in the systems tab, this is gonna be simple things like your media controls, scroll up, scroll down, refresh, DPI up, DPI toggle, copy, paste, cut, media controls, and a bunch of other things. And then if we go to the game mode tab, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. If you press this button on your keyboard, you're in game mode and you can see that it is highlighted right there. And what this does is it disables keys like your Windows button. So when I'm pressing Windows, the Windows menu is not popping up. But if I go ahead and disable this, now my Windows menu does pop up. So that's gonna be a really useful feature if you play games and you accidentally find yourself hitting the Windows tab and it just distracts your whole experience and it may cause you to not perform as well. And then another thing to touch on is gonna be the top drop down menu here. You can change your keyboard to act a specific way based on what game is running. So if you play Valheim, you can make the shortcuts act a specific way as well as the color of the keyboards. Or you have a global setting where when you're not running any games, you can have the keyboard run a different way. If you wanna see a dedicated review with the hardware of this keyboard, be sure to click the video up here. With that being said, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.